Thank you. Thank you, friends, for that vivid introduction. It's a song which is almost a half century old. And I think it brings back so many recollections to many of us. First of all, a world before COVID when we could get together, exult, and enjoy the evening as everyone in that film and song are clearly doing. The power of music to unite all ages, all genders, all persuasions. And the idea that peace, symbolized by the Paloma Blanca, the white dove, is something intensely personal and joyful. It's not something abstract to be left to politicians or diplomats or international organizations, but it is something that can be lived with and contribute to personal well being, personal happiness, and above all, a sense of personal fulfillment. I'm very grateful to my cherished friend, Thuan, for having suggested this program on the International Day of Peace, the autumn solstice, as we call it in the north, or the summer solstice in the southern hemisphere, the 21st of September. And also titling it Peace in the Age of Global Enlightenment, because as we were saying before our program formally began, enlightenment is not a word that we very often think of or associate with our world today. But I wanted to share with you two specific references to it at the United Nations in the last few years, which have in a sense revived the idea and made this conversation so topical. Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations, speaking in London, said that international institutions such as the UN must reform and adapt in order to defend enlightenment values. Europe's greatest gift to the world was the value of enlightenment, he said. Now they're being called into question and under threat. We are seeing the human rights agenda losing ground to the national sovereignty agenda. We see more and more irrational behavior, including aggressive nationalism. And the second is a resolution which the United Nations General Assembly adopted four years ago in December 2018. It was entitled Enlightenment and Religious Tolerance. And in that, it refers to asking governments and countries around the world to implement appropriate communication strategies, such as wide scale awareness, as well in national and international media and the internet to disseminate educational information on tolerance, nonviolence, and freedom of religion and belief. I emphasize that because the use of that word internet with all its connotations, particularly in our conversation today relating to uh, technology, is something fairly unusual at the United Nations. And the linkage between that and enlightenment, you know I think is going to be the scope of much of what we're going to listen to and discuss today. Pursuing that theme, just a few months ago, Secretary General Guterres appointed his first envoy on technology, something which the United Nations has never had before. And the person he chose was Amandeep Singh Gill, an ambassador from India, who at that time was the chief executive officer of the International Digital Health and Artificial Intelligence Research Collaborative at the Graduate Institute of International and Development Studies in Geneva. He brings to the position a deep knowledge of digital technologies, along with a solid understanding of how to leverage the digital transformation responsibly and inclusively for the sustainable development goals. He was also the executive director and co-lead of the United Nations Secretary General's high level panel on digital cooperation, which was convened between 2018 and 2019. We begin our discussion with a video message from the Envoy Technology Ambassador Gill. 